How many times have we watched an inspirational video and maybe bought a program from maybe somebody like the great Tony Robbins and thought, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And you start it and you go through it and you get motivated and, and you quit only to try something else again in another couple of years and go, I can do this, I can do this, I can, I can, I can. And this time, it's for real, I'm going to oh, slip back into the abyss. Now, we all operate on different levels. Now, genetically, we change and vary just as much in the inside as we do in the outside. If you see a really tall man, you'll say, right, He's really tall, he's got tall parents. And then you see someone, a smurf like me, and you go, well, obviously, his parents are quite short. And we take that as a given, genetics. Tall guy, short guy. But we also vary just as much inside. Now, this isn't a cop-out by any means. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, I had a friend who repeatedly had every tragedy, every illness, every misfortune that you can imagine, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And they were always happy, they were always smiley, they were always bouncy, they were always positive. And the general thinking was, what a great, positive, determined person. Isn't it fabulous? What a strong will that person's got. And of course, there's an element to that, but I'd known this person for a long time, and let me tell you, they bounced out the freaking womb with a smile on their face. They were one of these people that were happy, 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 happy all the time, and they didn't know why. Bottom line, low cortisol, high endorphins. Genetically, their brain chemistry was predisposed, so it was very easy for them to be bouncy, 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 happy. Conversely, you might see someone maybe sitting in the corner of an office you work at and you'll think, well, he's always looking grumpy. What's wrong with him? He's never got a smile on his face. And maybe the reverse is true. Maybe it takes him all that he knows to kind of get up in the morning, go to work, get through the day. And, you know, it's just a case of Naturally, his body doesn't produce a lot of endorphins, you know, his brain chemistry is, is different that way. Now, we vary just as much in the inside as we do on the outside. And I'm not talking about people that are unfortunately very ill with mental illnesses or stuff like that. I'm, I'm talking about that kind of grey area where some of us find it really hard to kind of just raise a game and others are just like boing, 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 bouncy. The good news is, lifestyle, preparation, time management, good living, good health makes everything better. Bad health makes everything worse. So there's lots that we can do within ourselves to make the most of what we've got. Now, everyone's different. When I was young, I thought I want to be a multimillionaire. At all costs, no matter what, I had to be a multimillionaire or that was it. My life was over. And I had an opportunity uh, years ago. This is back in oh, late 80s, early 90s. I uh, had a colleague who started a very successful telecommunications firm. And they offered me a job. And I didn't stick it out very long. It wasn't for me. And that individual went on to make a massive success of it, sell the company and become a multi-millionaire. However, a lot of people might think, oh, what a missed opportunity, Paul. Don't you wish, don't you wish you'd stayed hung in there and went along for the ride and maybe got a piece of that? If I was being honest with myself, it's not within me to be what he was or do what he did. And it's not a bad thing, so don't run away screaming. That man, let me tell you, 
he would work 20 hours a day. He would sleep for four hours, put his suit back on and get up. And he would do that seven days a week. His body and his brain allowed him to function like that. And he'd done all the right things and he worked his butt off. And then when the lucky train came along, he was in the right place at the right time doing the right things. Make no mistake, he earned his success. He deserves every bit of it and every bit of the success he gets in the future. However, there are plenty of people that do the same. And for every one of him, there'll be hundreds that don't get to that level, maybe thousands. And my point is, success is a journey, not a destination. When I look back, I know that I could not, could not have done what he did. If I'm being truly honest with myself, and that's so important, no matter what you want to do in life, if you want to do well at sports, do well at school, do well in business, reality is important. And I always say to my clients, it doesn't matter where you're at in your life, as long as you're honest with yourself, you have your starting point. And that's vitally important, because if you don't have a starting point, you, you, you can't realistically, realistically gauge where the finish line is going to be and what your direction should be. And, and that's that's hard for most people to be truly honest with themselves. And an example of that is when people are scared of something or if you're scared of something, how often do you honestly say to somebody, yeah, I'm a bit scared of that? Invariably, we don't. But that kind of honesty is required for people to kind of uh, get where they want to be in life. And it's also okay to be average. And I, I see myself as that now, hence the name Average Joe's Guy. Now that might not sound very inspiring, but from where I've been, average was up there. It was it was a long way away. So I'm, I'm really quite proud to be able to call myself average in some of the things I do. I feel I've been quite successful and I'm very happy. And that to me is success. So one thing that I think is really important to say is don't look at other people and don't look what they're achieving because what if they have the happy, 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 bouncy genetics that you don't? It's easier for them. Well, psychologically, it be easier for them to get where they're going to go. So I think this is all about foundation building. And I always say to people, you need to plan, you need to strategize. And as simple as this, you need to put it down on paper. Whatever your goals are, they're only up there in your head until they're down on paper. Until you put them down on paper, it's only a dream. And that can drive you insane. You've got these things that you might or might not do or hope to achieve going round and round your head. It's amazing even just writing them down on paper and looking at them going, right, here we are, stage one. It really kind of a kickstarts the process. Now, that's kickstarting the process. A lot of people out there might say, oh, but I'm not very motivated. Or, I find it hard to get myself up for things. You know what I mean? What if I fail? There's so many roadblocks out there, but you cannot let that deter you. Always, 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 always remember a client of mine who was an end of life nurse. She worked for Marie Curie. She would say to me, sometimes when people were speaking to her and those people knew that their life was soon going to be over, that they always kind of said to her, it's so clear to me now, now that I no longer have that choice, of course I can do anything I want with my life. And I wish I'd done this, and I wish I'd done that. It's so clear to me now, there are no boundaries, of course I can. And it is that simple, of course you can. However, of course you can, but maybe you can't do it like Tony Robbins or other people. So. If you find yourself having watched some of these very inspirational people, trying their methods and finding it's just a wee bit much, that's okay, baby steps. I think building a foundation first is really important. So to give you an example of me, 
I am very naturally lazy. It's within my genetic code, code to not want to do much of anything. I'm also a big scaredy cat, so I'm f quite scared of a lot of things too. I procrastinate. I'm naturally disorganised. But I've managed to do alright for myself. And i found routine and structure is paramount. An example of that is, I'm, part of what I do is lifestyle management and coaching is I see people very early in the morning. So I have to be up very early in the morning. Now, because I'm involved in health and fitness, I like to eat, as you would imagine, very healthy. So I'm that disorganized. I know there's no way I'll get up early in the morning and make my food. It just won't happen. So when I come in every day from work, I make my food. It's the first thing I do for the next day. I put it in my cool bag and I put my cool bag in the fridge. Then I take my car keys and I put my car keys in the fridge. Why? Because I don't pretend to be something I'm not. I'm not. I plan for exactly who I am. I'm disorganised. I'm scatty. I procrastinate. So what I do is I plan from the fact that first thing in the morning, I know I'm not probably going to forget my food. So when I go to the front door and try to get out, I can't because my keys are in the cool bag in the fridge that has my food. So it means by a wee bit of organisation, I'm always going to take healthy food to work. And that's how I keep eating healthy food at work. Another thing I do is I have a wee box in my kitchen because I come down to the kitchen first thing every morning. And that has, if there's anything I need to do, I have it physically in that box. Uh, if it's if I need to change the batteries and something, there's batteries. Uh, if I need to take a certain vitamin, the vitamin's in that box. And it's in plain view. And it might sound silly, but I'm an A to B kind of guy. If I need to get from A to B, it doesn't really matter to me that, okay, I'm disorganized. Uh, I don't have much structure. I'm not very motivated. I plan in such a way. So it's idiot proof for idiots like me. And I found that that's very good routine and structure if you're not naturally motivated and you're not naturally an inspiration to yourself per se. I find that very helpful. First thing I do when I get out of bed is I make my bed. Why? Because it's a good start to the day. Can I be bothered making my bed? Half the time, no. But that's not the point. You get up and you start as you mean to go on. It's like brain training. You're saying to your, breath, your body and your brain, I don't want to do this. But I'm doing it anyway. And once you've done that, it's like kickstarting your brain and saying, right, we're doing things. And I just, I think that's a good way to propel yourself forward. Now, I have a to-do list. And it's, <laughs> I'm all about the to-do list. But I have a to-do list for every day. And I have a master sheet for every week where I have kind of goals that I set myself. Do I achieve them all? Not in your life. However, I've got things that I do and boxes to tick. And because it's there in front of me, I get some, all, most of them done. And what's good about that is that propels you forward. Now, when you're feeling really low and when you're feeling really fed up, it seems almost insurmountable to kind of acclaim this Tony Robbins mountain of enthusiasm. Well, what I'm here to tell you is that's not initially necessary. People can go on to achieve anything and do anything they want in their life. However, sometimes we need to start small and that can be the most basic things like looking after your health, eating a wee bit better, exercise is a must. And I'm not talking about going to gyms or, or busting your ass. I'm talking about a walk. My goodness, a walk. The greatest, the greatest thing on earth for your body and your mind. When I walk, I walk for leisure. Of course, you're getting a bit of health and fitness out of it. But I walk to cleanse my soul and to clear my head. And I, I view my brain sometimes as a bit of a petulant puppy. 
And when it's going do, 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 and it's not behaving itself, I get my jacket on and take it for a wee walk. And I find when I, after I've taken it for a wee walk, it usually calms down. And it's amazing how doing things physically takes you out of yourself. And when you take yourself out of yourself and you're physically doing things, it helps your emotions kind of sort themselves out. So I'm a firm believer that you don't always need to kind of feel like doing things, but doing things will change how you feel. Now, I've got lots more to discuss in this subject, and I'll do that in another video, namely uh, about the bus, and I'll tell you all about the bus in another video, about how to motivate yourself and to get things going and to keep things going. So if you've liked the video and you've found it of any use, please subscribe, hit like, and most importantly, hit the wee notification bell, and I'll send you more videos when they come out. See you soon.